Hi, my name is Heather Schultz. Thank you for joining me today and for your interest in Beauty and Truth Math. I'm one of the co-authors of our math guides and my business partner, Emily Alcatib and I want to thank you for being here. Today, I'm going to cover an overview of our curriculum and answer some of the frequently asked questions we get about our curriculum. So let's get started. So the goal of our curriculum is threefold. We want parents to be equipped to use the Charlotte Mason method in their math lessons. The second thing we want is for both parents and students to grow in their love for the Lord as they see the beauty and truth of math as a reflection of his character. And finally, we want to lay a solid foundation in math where students can see the accuracy, order, and patterns God has established as a reflection of his character and then use what they learn to love and serve others outside their lesson time. This leads our curriculum to being different from other curriculum in four significant ways. The first thing that makes our curriculum unique is that we follow the streams of math like Charlotte Mason did in the parents' union schools. These were the schools where parents would homeschool their students and were sent information of what to do each term. So for the first four years, students do arithmetic in their math lessons. Then in year five, they exchange one of the days of arithmetic for one day of practical geometry. Then in year six, another day of arithmetic is exchanged for a day of el elementary algebra. So from year six on, students now have three streams of math, arithmetic, geometry, and algebra. Our curriculum is based on four things, Charlotte Mason's own writings, what we see in the programs, parents review articles, and the national math standards. The second thing that sets our curriculum apart is that we sell digital PDFs that are scripted lessons of conversation. We do not write math textbooks. Instead, we write math guides for parents to use as a means of teaching their students using the Charlotte Mason method. We write these guides alongside math textbooks that are rich in mathematical thinking. Our years one through six arithmetic guides are written from the teacher's perspective. This is also true of the practical geometry guides written for years five and six. Once students can read independently, they are able to do half of most lessons independently and often the review days. In year six, the one day of elementary algebra guide is written to the students. Each lesson has a well, at least one teacher check-in and this guide is the transition year between students being teacher-led versus student-led as they learn to own their own education. In year seven on, all the guides are written to the students for them to take full ownership of their math education. They still, every lesson will still include, include a teacher check-in for any new material. Review days, the students are able to do independently aside from the teacher checking in on how they're doing. And we still, while we want the students to have ownership of their education, they are never to be fully independent because we believe it is important to always have discussion of the big ideas and for parents to be able to ask questions and check for understanding with what the student is learning. But now the student is sharing most of their knowledge with the parent as we shift the focus and responsibility from the parent, being more parent-led to student-led. The third thing that makes our guides unique is that they provide a guided and living math education with an emphasis on guided. Our guides are just that, guides, not a law. They are written with each idea being presented and approach in one way. There's more than one way to learn addition and subtraction and multiplication and division and all the other math ideas out there. So we present one way each year and as students dive in deeper on different ideas, the approaches to those ideas are different each year. So we try to approach from a variety of views, but we definitely don't cover all of them. And we want parents to feel the freedom to adapt their lessons to meet their student where they are at because every kid is different. We want to minimize decision-making for parents. However, because every student is unique, we are not going to tell you what to do every single day, no matter what. You have to use your brain and the giftings God has given you as your student's parent to help them learn and explore the mathematical ideas being presented in our guides. To minimize decision fatigue, though, we have included several things. We include suggested review and suggested mental math, suggested pacing for the lessons. We include symbols that give you ideas of how important the lesson is, if the student will see the idea again, and what to do if your student's not completing the lesson in the time allotted. 
And then every lesson states the purpose and goal for that lesson so that you should never feel lost with our math guides. Our math guides are also written to apply Charlotte Mason's methods. And that makes our curriculum unique in about five different ways that I can think of off the top of my head. First, our lessons are short. We do our best to fit them in 20 to 30 minutes from years four, one through six. We do not want students spending tons and tons of time on math. We want to follow the short lessons like Charlotte Mason's students did. Our lessons are also primarily oral through year six. This allows students reading ability and writing abilities not to hinder their ability to learn math. Our lessons go from concrete to the abstract, the known to the unknown, and we approach things, different math ideas with a variety of manipulatives. Most of them can be found around your house. So we want students to see real life applications early on by always starting with the concrete. Students are always taught the reason why they may not grasp it right away, but we want them to understand that math is reasonable and there's no randomness in math. The fourth thing that makes our curriculum unique is that it's based on the math books used in the parents' union schools. We have tracked down almost every book that we can find in the programs. And so we use that to inform the decisions we make with curriculum alongside the national math standards. We use the exact same book using the programs for practical geometry, but we have chosen not to use the books used in Charlotte Mason's time for arithmetic and algebra because it uses British money instead of the US dollar. And so we have used a lot of the ideas we see in those books. For example, we have a dot chart that students used in the early years that we found in the original books students were using in Charlotte Mason schools. And we also use connection multiplication tables across several years in the lower forms. These are all ideas that we see in these books and we are able to translate them and use them in our current modern time just fine. But because of the British money not being decimalized, we have chosen not to use the arithmetic and algebra guides originally used. As we tracked down the math books used in the programs, we came across the book titled Teaching the Essentials of Arithmetic by Philip Boswood Ballard. This book, starting in program 113, was recommended parent reading for the lower forms. We consider it the teacher's handbook for a math education using the Charlotte Mason method and have partnered with Yesterday's Classics to reprint it. You can find the link for it on our favorites page on our website. So what textbooks do we actually use instead of the ones that Charlotte Mason used? The year one guide called Elementary Arithmetic is an all-inclusive guide. There are no additional texts used. In years two and three, students use the Strayer Upton book one. These first three years in Form 1 are where students explore addition alongside subtraction as inverses of each other, as well as multiplication alongside division, including unit fractions. They start learning a half and a third and a quarter and a fifth in year two as a simple introduction to fractions. This continues through year three through the twelves table for multiplication. We are often asked why we use Strayer Upton Book 1 in 2nd and 3rd grade when it was written originally for 3rd and 4th graders. And the answer is that we use it at, to teach new ideas and new material from the beginning versus the way it was written was supposed to be a review of 2nd grade at the beginning. In years 4 through 6, students use Strayer Upton Book 2 and catch up to the recommended grades and ages for these books. So in years four through six, students are continuing to explore the idea of the four fundamental operations of arithmetic, of adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. We really hone in on fractions during this time. We want to make sure students have a very solid foundation beginning in year two all the way through year six. Decimals and percents are then taught in the context of how they relate to fractions. Each year, students go deeper and deeper into these ideas as they see them from different angles and approaches and continue to build and lay a solid foundation for the other streams of math. Beginning in year five, as already mentioned, students begin practical geometry. And as I had said earlier, they use the Hall and Stevens book, Lessons in Experimental and Practical Geometry that was used in Charlotte Mason schools. Year five, we want to warn you right now, is the most teacher intensive year. 
Year five in arithmetic is when they are really solidifying all the ideas of how fractions work with adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing them. And then they are also starting hands-on investigations in geometry. After that, the workload lightens significantly for the teacher. There are also extra printables in year five that are the amount of printables used in year five is a lot higher than previous years because there are certain ideas not covered in Strayer Upton that are in the national math standards and we absolutely want students to see those. So you ramp up through year five and then you start transitioning to students owning their own education and the amount of manipulatives and printables decreases dramatically starting in year six. In year six, students add a day of elementary algebra and this guide is also all inclusive. We want our guides to be budget friendly, which is part of why we chose the Strayer Upton books because they're not very expensive and you use them across several years. So when we looked at elementary algebra, we knew the textbook we chose would only be used for one year and we didn't like the thought of that. We also need students to buy a graphing calculator in term three to help lay a foundation for high school algebra and beyond. So to offset that cost, we decided to use public domain algebra books and the books Charlotte Mason used to inform our elementary algebra guide. When people look at our curriculum and see what textbooks we use alongside our guides, we are often asked why we use older textbooks. And there are several reasons for that that we want to share today. The first is that we believe math in and of itself is living and full of engaging ideas. So we want and appreciate that the older textbooks are very simple in format. There are not colorful um, diagrams and lots of text and different pieces to catch your eye, to keep it moving. We want students to engage with the math idea. And we have found that the older textbooks tend to do that best. The Strayer Upton books especially shine in this area. Older textbooks also tend to go from the concrete to the abstract instead of teaching pure number first. So a lot of modern textbooks will teach students their math facts, and then they have to apply it later on to word problems. That's flipped from what Charlotte Mason would do. She would say, no, you start with the concrete. You start with what students can see and feel and move around and touch and draw. And so we love that the older textbooks, like Stray the Strayer Upton books especially, really allow students to engage with the physical and see how it works. And then after that, they practice memorizing their math facts as they see the value in it and how it actually works conceptually. Also, by creating guides, we are able to make up for the lack of technology in the older textbooks. The elementary algebra guide has a couple lessons that walk students through how to use the graphing calculator. We do not need modern textbooks to do that because we are writing the teacher and student scripted lessons. So what are our plans for the future? We have several, buckle up. The first is we want to create math guides through the 10th grade. This will allow students to get through three years of high school math credit, and it will our plan is to continue writing guides for all three streams of math. We also want to provide parents with other resources like the mental math resources we see in the programs that we have tracked down. They need to be updated to match uh, the US money and be applicable to today, but a ton of the curriculum and books we have tracked down are phenomenal and just need to be adapted a little to be used today. We also want to create group math lessons for families to use where students of different ages are able to engage and explore a math idea together at different uh, levels. And then we also want to create more resources about the research we've done using Charlotte Mason's method and how that looks in your math homeschool classrooms. And then we also want to share a lot of the free resources we have found on our website. And so we have a lot beyond just our math guides that we are hoping to do. So that's the overview of our math curriculum. Thank you so much for watching this. If you still have questions after watching this, please feel free to email us at contact at beautyandtruthmath.com. Thanks again.